Hi and welcome to my channel. This is Phil Susan here in another one of my masterclass series. And today we're going to look at the song Last in Line as opposed to the band The Last in Line, which is our band, which is the band I'm in. Uh, this was the song released from the album of the same name by Dio way back in 1984. Very special track for me. Um, a big fan of Jimmy's, of course. Um, and I actually think what he did on bass on this track was just genius. So once again, I'm going to play along to it and then we'll go back. We'll look at the individual parts and see if there are any little nuances or cool things that we can take away from this. So here we go. Last in line. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, last in line. So, here we go. It starts off, of course, with the intro. The intro is uh, the quiet picked part. Um, you know. The Viv plays on guitar. Now, I've turned my volume down because I want a kind of clean sound. Not too much growl. Five count. Two, three, four, five. That messes people up all the time, but it is a five count. You just count five beats. Now let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so what I do here is I'm playing with my fingers, of course. I'm gonna put the pick down for a moment and show you what I'm doing. Um, I use a lot of dead notes all the time. I do this all the time, not just in this song, but any time I'm playing. So if I'm slowing it down, I, I could just be playing the single notes. Which should be fine, but I actually like using these dead notes all the time. And it's definitely something worth practicing. I mean, um, you can kind of come up with a very simple line, you know. Right? And just playing these dead notes in there, what you're doing is you're, you're playing a percussive part. It's almost like I'm playing in the rhythm section and I'm playing a rhythm with the drummer, which I'm entitled to do. It's sort of really, it's really cool. It sort of means that we're playing together rhythmically as well as holding down the low end, which is a lot of fun. So definitely something to practice. Take one uh, or two notes and play them together and see if you can come up with a really cool rhythm. Come up with your own drum part, drum part your own rhythmic part that comes up with those two notes. Um, somebody told me one time, it's really cool. I can't remember who it was actually. Um, a great way to learn soloing would be to start off with just one note. See if you can make a musically interesting part with one note. And using these kind of um, tactics and these kind of ideas of playing rhythmically like that. And then, once you think you've got the hang of that, you can have a second note. <laughs> And then after that, maybe a third. But keep doing this, and it's really cool. And what is it? It's R&B. It's James Jameson. It's funk. It's all of that kind of stuff. There's no reason you can't take those kind of influences and those kind of techniques and bring them into rock music. It's just going to add another, another layer of really cool stuff to what you do. So that's the intro part. And then, of course, then we get into the, the big powerful thing. We turn it up, and, and we have these big stabs. <laughs> And you'll notice that I don't go or I'm timing it with the drums. So I want to make sure it's and I'm ending the note. Right? And then we come into the riff. And the riff is basically. Those are the notes. So it's it's A A A D T E C to D. And when Jimmy plays it, and he does a fantastic job of doing this, this is kind of simplistic genius, but um, um, uh, for the big hits, he gives he gives it a little bit of one of these lead in with lead in lines, which is basically an E to G coming up to that so but he doesn't play it there he doesn't go he goes and he puts a slide in there which is really cool because now we're gonna have another slide right 
And again, those slides have to be timed beautifully. It's not, and it's not, it's, and again, I'm using again, lots and lots of dead beats, dead beats, that's <laughs> it, dead beats, dead notes, or dead beats, whatever you want to call them. Anyway. you can hear that and then we come into the riff you know which is the first and I'm not sure I think he plays one of two types of riff and so do I I alternate them I'm not sure which ones he does but um, you're counting you're, you're sorry you're playing down from the C to the G and then just a major scale down but he either goes Or A A, and I always alternate these two, and I, it's a technique as well that I use a lot. When sometimes I'll play a note, and then I'll hit the same note again to accent it, but on a different string, and that's a really cool trick. So, as opposed to that, sounds kind of flat, but. You're into the Jimmy Vane um, triplet gallop, trallop, if you want, which he does these triplets. And there's always an accent. You have to have a lope on it. Sorry, excuse me. You have to have a lope on it. You can't just go. You have to have. And once again, pulling it back from the beat. You, if you're on top of that doing the gallop, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound like it has that bottom end. So, and you see there, I did the little, the little lead in, but I did it there on the high end. And then we get into the pre-chorus. So just playing, it's just climb, playing it down. And then more Jimmy Bain genius. So it's A, A octave. Right? But the first time he plays it, he plays, he doesn't play the octave, he plays the low note. And then goes to the octave. It's just such a simple thing, but it's so effective and it's so beautifully done. Just, just great. And then after that, we get into the solo, which is basically like the pre-chorus again. And it alternates between the F and the A. And when we're playing this live, Vinny and I will play around with those. We'll put different accents in. We'll try to match each other. And then it doubles up here. Very often echoing what the bass is, what the bass, what the drums are doing with the bass. So the kick drum and the snare. So we're playing that, builds up the energy, and then we get into those stabs again. And it's just... 
and then we get into the last verse. And people who are familiar with the live version. Right? Get into that, and then we get into the one of the uh, the pre-chorus again and then finally we just go round and round the last riff which is right and then I'll usually open it up adding some notes to it and then when we play it live we we uh, we'll end with the uh, we, we, um, I can't remember what we do like <laughs> we'll end it anyway but ba basically that's the whole song and you know honestly kudos to Jimmy because it's such a fun track to play and he really took a part and created an incredible um, incredible bass part under uh, out of this song out of the uh, to go underneath this song so um, one of the things that you have to do, you know, as a bass player in this kind of music, is you are trying to create movement, make sure that people can feel that things are going on, things are moving, but you're still managing to hold the low end down, and it's a it's a double challenge to do because you don't ever want to get away from that bottom end being there, but you always want to cr create the um, um, create the imp impression. I, I want to say illusion, but it's not an illusion because that's a, actually what's happening you want to make people aware of the movement that's going on underneath it's the beauty of being a bass player um, who especially someone as good as Jimmy was but with this all this sliding around and all this kind of Andy Fraser stuff it's really beautiful so really that's uh, that's last in line uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed it I hope you found a few interesting things to take away with you from this thank you for watching please 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 subscribe uh, it takes me a while to do these so um, uh, I don't post them uh, too frequently, and if you subscribe, I promised not to uh, um, over over overwhelm your inbox. You'll get a ping when one of these is posted, and then you can come check it out. But uh, thanks again. Please leave some comments. Please leave questions, maybe even suggestions of things you might want to hear, and I will try to get back to all of them. Thanks you so much for watching, and see you soon.